Hi, I'm Fernando Pereira from UFMG, and today we start talking about graph coloring based register locators. There are many variations of register locators based on graph coloring. One common trait among most of them is the fact that they are all based on a heuristic called camp simplification. We shall look into this technique in this class. The idea that we can model register location as an instance of graph coloring is due to Gregory Chaitin. In this modeling, we have one vertex per program variable and edges correspond to interference between variables. Two variables whose live ranges overlap will be connected by an edge. Colors are mapped to registers so that after coloring the graph, we have a solution to a register location. Let's use this program on the right to perform register allocation. This is the interference graph of the program. We use solid edges, meaning that we have variables whose live ranges overlap. And we use dashed edges denoting pairs of variables that are related by a copy instruction. Usually it helps to keep track of these variables because it's good to map them to the same register. So we need to find a valid coloring of the graph. A coloring is valid if two vertices linked by a solid edge get different colors. To find this coloring, the most well-known heuristic is due to Alfred John Camp. Camp provides a way to sort the nodes of the graph so that we can color these nodes in the order given by his heuristics. Basically, he provides an elimination scheme. If we know that a node has less than k neighbors and we want to color a graph with k colors, we know that this node will be always colorable. So we can remove it from the graph and continue looking into other nodes. If we can remove all the nodes in this way, the graph is k colorable. Here's an example of how it works. We want to color this graph with three colors. Let's start looking into R3 right here in the original graph. R3 has only two neighbors, thus we can remove it. Then, R1 now has only two neighbors, so we can remove it as well. Notice that before R1 had three neighbors and we would not be able to eliminate it. But after removing R3, R1 is left with one neighbor less. So we continue removing nodes like this until we either find a graph where no node can be removed or we eliminate every node in the graph. If we have removed all the nodes, coloring the graph is easy. We go back in the inverse order in which we have removed nodes, assigning them colors in a greedy fashion. Basically, we assign numbers to the colors and then we assign colors to registers, picking always the available color with the lowest number. Let's try to color these nodes, for instance. The nodes are piled right here in the order in which they have been eliminated. We pick up D and give it the lowest color, which is green in this example. Then we pick up A and color it. A must get a different color because A and D interfere. We continue popping B, C and E. We assign E the same color as A, because E and A do not interfere. So color number 2, which is red in this example, would be available when we, had to, we have to color E. And we continue like this until we color all the nodes in the graph. Notice that Camp's heuristic does not try to find the chromatic number of the graph. This is an NP complete problem, and even if we cannot apply Camp's heuristic, it does not really mean that the graph is not colorable with k colors. Maybe there exists a k coloring, it's just that we have not found it. And that concludes our overview of Camp's simplification heuristic. Next class, we start talking about a graph coloring based allocator called the Iterated Register Coalescer.